there. Go ahead and back it up a little bit. It's uh, 620 on a Thursday, and our house is now getting loaded up for the move to New Orleans. Meg and Marty O'Connell are going to take an incredible gamble. They're moving this brand new home 100 miles across Louisiana into the heart of post-Katrina New Orleans. I think it's a pioneer spirit. It's just like the people that went out west. Somebody has to be out there to be the first to put the stake down. We're going to be that. Meg and Marty lost their current home in the massive flooding after Katrina. The water settled there, but it actually got up higher where you see the debris. That is the Katrina water line, as they call it, the bathtub line going through the whole city. They've lived in this home for five years. Yep. This is what's left. This was our front room. That was our bedroom. We painted every square into this house. Every bit of it we've touched and renovated over the years. So it's going to be tough to see that just go. Katrina has forced them to give up on this house, but not on this place they call home. You have to be tough. You can crumple up and whine and stay in the corner, or you can just keep on going. And they're counting on house mover Warren Davey to conquer the streets of New Orleans and deliver their new house. They're determined to stay right here in the community. They're the kind of people that New Orleans really needs. I can't wait. <laughs> We're living in a FEMA trailer now. It's two people. It's a little crowded. The new house that we're bringing in is a three-bedroom, two-bath home, a little bit larger than the one that they had before. I'm telling you right now, it's the second toilet. <laughs> <laughs> For me, that, that's top on the list. Moving this house is the cheapest and fastest way for Marty and Mag to come back home. I am looking forward to my first Sunday afternoon in the backyard, maybe some ribs on the grill. It'll probably be the first house that's completed in their neighborhood. But moving their new house into New Orleans will take almost superhuman strength and courage. The route stretches a full 100 miles across Louisiana, which is a very long haul for a house. I want to see it come down the road. I've seen it on television. It'll be our house. Along the way, the house will have to be lifted over several highway bridges that are too narrow to cross. I'm going to have to slow down, lift it up over the railing. But the tightest squeeze will be fitting under this overpass on the outskirts of the city. We're going to have about two inches of clearance. Once we get through that overpass, we can pick up speed and make up for lost time. It's a clear route. We can go 50 miles an hour all the way down into New Orleans. But the city is where things could grind to a halt. Many of the streets are still littered with hurricane debris. Sometimes you'll see broken water mains. There are abandoned cars on the sides of the road that we're going to have to lift up and go over. Warren is betting on a secret weapon to combat the endless sea of obstacles. This trailer allows us to go up and over mailboxes. We can go up and over any abandoned car that's in the middle of the road. This one-of-a-kind hydraulic trailer has yet to be tested in post-Katrina New Orleans. We're very interested to see how this looks. But the hardest part of moving the new home will come at the very end. Once they make it to the lot, they have to lift the house up onto a 10-foot tall foundation. Getting here is the easy part, and then you have to lift it up 10 feet and back over the foundation. This challenge will push Warren's trailer to the absolute limit. We're relying on hydraulics. God forbid there's a hose that breaks or there's a tire that blows. Lifting the house will be a huge risk, but the tall foundation is the only way to protect the new house from another levee break. By going 10 feet from the ground, we're going to be higher than the waters of Katrina were at our house. That's a benchmark that we take very seriously. But in order to get ready for the move, Meg and Marty have to get through this. Well, today, um, after many hurdles and decisions, we are going to get our house demolished. It's kind of gut-wrenching. That first swipe through was pretty tough. It's 
pretty tough, and uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's pretty tough. Tearing down this house is the only way to make way for their new home. We're rebuilding. We are rebuilding. I think it's it's good that we're we're moving on. You know, the people are here. New Orleanians, they know what we're going through. There we go, the last bit. It takes just five minutes to scrape away five years of memories. Just look that way. You don't have to I look know, I don't have to look at it anymore. <laughs> but to see the walls coming down, and it's not like it's just some building we knew. That's where we lived, so. That's but your yeah, house. That's my house. <laughs> It's a tragic end, but also a new beginning. Clock is ticking, and the sooner we get the new house here, the sooner we're going to be physically here in this neighborhood and living here again. And it all rides on a successful move. I have a lot of weight on my shoulders because I know that if anything happens to that house, she's going to be devastated. We just want to come home. We just want to be back in our neighborhood. But to come back home, Meg and Marty must first conquer this. Right now, it doesn't look like it's going to fit. And that's not the only danger. Alligators. <laughs> yeah, there are alligators all around here. It's 7.09, and they have started moving the house out of the lot. So we're on the way to go to New Orleans with the house. Right there, that's good. 10 months after being wiped out by Hurricane Katrina. It's been a while preparing, but this is the big day. Meg and Marty O'Connell are about to haul their new house home. I like it a lot. I could pretty much live on this porch. I can put my lounge chair out, get a drink out, read the newspaper. It's just going to be very enjoyable. The O'Connells lost their old home in the flooding after Katrina. And this brand new three bedroom, two bath house is the quickest way to rebuild. We're definitely going back because it is our favorite place in the world to be. I wouldn't want to live anyplace else. We love New Orleans. But getting their new home to New Orleans is going to be a very long haul that begins 100 miles away in a muddy lot in Hammond, Louisiana. Steer them all the way to the left. Everything is riding on Warren Davies' hydraulic trailer. It gives me complete control over that house. Oh, I'm impressed. I'm always impressed when I see it. I am very good to open it. Wheels facing the right way to come over to you. No, I'll go the other way. But this super trailer may not even make it off the lot. We got it loaded, and one thing I was concerned about was getting it over that front gate. The house is too wide to fit through the gate, and there's only one way out, up. <laughs> it's supposed to do that. The trailer must lift the 20-ton house over the fence. So we're having to come up and over this gate, and it's real, real tight. This is the first time we've done this. My first reaction was to move. <laughs> you know, I trust him, but it was like, OK. 12 minutes into the move, and the trailer is already pushed to its limits. Now I'm thinking, well, wow. <laughs> How long is this going to take? <laughs> that was uh, probably one of my biggest concerns in the whole move was coming out those gates because we had to go up eight and a half foot. And we almost weren't high enough. It's about quarter to eight, and we are finally getting out from where the house was. And now, the 20-ton house is reaching speeds of 30 miles per hour. I think the speed is a little unnerving. Definitely using up both lanes and then some on this country road. Now they're driving people literally off the road. The house keeps going around turns and banking. I mean, we've seen it at about a 45 degree angle. The ability of the trailer to lift up helps us over these narrower bridges. The house is wider than the railings, and we just come right up and over the bridges. Every bridge conquered is another step towards rebuilding New Orleans. Come up on the left a little bit, Murray. When I see this house moving, I think we are just way ahead of the ball game, and I hope that other people can see this and realize, hey, I can do this too. But they're not in the clear just yet. 
It's about 10 minutes to 9, and I think we're coming up to our biggest obstacle yet. You know, this could be where you got a complication or two. <laughs> <laughs> this is a low overpass for us that we're going to be going under, and we don't have enough room from the middle of the road over. The house is almost a foot too tall to fit under the right side of this overpass. This is a difficult one. Um, we measured it out real, real good. We're going to be dealing with quarters of inches. Right now, it doesn't look like it's going to fit. And the tight squeeze is not the only problem. Alligators. <laughs> yeah, there are alligators all around here. Everybody keeps their, their left eye on the alligators. But if they don't clear this bridge, they'll never get to New Orleans. They have no choice but to go for it. So what we're going to have to do is lift up the left-hand side of the trailer over the railing on the left-hand side, and we'll just barely be able to sneak through. Nudge it forward. Look, we're looking all right so far. Well, he's coming up over the railing, and uh, I'm just watching the peak of the roof, making sure it, it's not going to hit that overpass. Pretty tight squeeze. I'm waiting for some shingles to come flying off. Uh, looks good. Looks good. I'm not driving that. It looks like they're making it just now. The house squeaks through with less than an inch to spare. It took us about 20 minutes to go about uh, 100 yards. The house got through, and I think this was one of the major hurdles, and now we're, we've got clear sailing. We're ready to go 50 miles an hour. But the hardest part is yet to come. I'm just curious to see how we're going to deal with the streets in New Orleans that were flooded and all the garbage that's on the streets. Boy, we really are scraping it close. We're going south on a very straight country road, and we're up to now almost 60 miles per hour. It's just after 9 a.m. And Meg and Marty's brand new home is barreling down State Highway 51 and heading straight for New Orleans. I'm just happy that we're getting this house closer and closer to New Orleans every minute we're on the road. And closer to their neighborhood, which was under nine feet of water after Katrina. But this could be as close as they get. 60 miles from the city, they're stopped by a 100-foot bridge over Lake Pontchartrain. Hey, Murray. We can inspect the trailer, make sure everything's working right. The house will have to lift seven feet into the air to clear the guardrails. We're just coming through and rechecking, making sure that it's strapped down. No damage. We're looking real good. We still have about 20 miles to go, and a lot of that is going to be slow going. All right, Murray. When you're ready. I'm amazed at what this thing can do. It's 1 o'clock. It's gone really well so far. I'm surprised at how quickly they're moving this. But the biggest challenge is yet to come. The busy streets of downtown New Orleans. We're hitting our first batch of urban drivers. So they're going to show their anger with a couple of gestures and horn blowing and such. We're going against traffic, and we're going with traffic. It's a little bit more congested. Can you lower it down here, Chris? You're scraping this whole roof up. Boy, you really are scraping it close. There is quite a bit of uh, obstacles that we're driving through right now. Ma'am, do we know who, the, who that car is? Hey, Chris, unless you want to go right up over the car, you know? Lift up on your left. All right, come straight, come straight. I guess I didn't think that this would take this long. They're being very careful going underneath all the lights and the wires and past people's trees and things. 
But for Meg and Marty, what lies ahead will be like dealing with the aftermath of Katrina all over again. I'm just curious to see how we're going to deal with the streets of New Orleans that were flooded. Katrina hit in 2005, and parts of New Orleans are still cleaning up. I didn't realize how many hazards there are when you're going through narrow streets. All right, you're fine on the left. Looking OK over there, Logan? It'll be all right. OK, looking good. Come on. There's just one mile and one overpass to go. We went over an area where we hadn't really looked at before, and we got an old alternator stuck between the tires. We took a hammer and beat it out. First time we'd ever had an alternator caught between the tires. All right, go ahead. It's good. Meg and Marty's street is just a few blocks away. Looking good, Murray, come on. Just half a block, we're almost there. At 3.30 in the afternoon, Meg, Marty, and their house finally arrive home. We've come about 100 miles. <laughs> 100 mile move, it was a long way. I'm pretty excited. People are excited about something new coming into New Orleans, it gives them hope. I'm looking forward to having my house. I'm going to feel like our home's back. 100 miles down and just 10 more feet to go. We got here, and uh, now comes the big challenge. They still have to back the house onto its 10-foot foundation. That might be it for the truck. Is that it for the lift in the truck? Are Meg and Marty about to lose another house? They're coming over. Well, they had a bit of a problem, at least from our amateur standpoint. Meg and Marty have hauled this house 100 miles across Louisiana to replace the home they lost in Hurricane Katrina. They're excited about the house being here. They could finally see it on their street. I just want to be back in my neighborhood. Now, there's just 10 more feet to go, and it's all straight up. We got here, and uh, now comes the big challenge. The house must be placed on top of this 10-foot foundation to be safe from future flooding. I'd like to see the house steady and not moving anymore. But there's a problem. Warren's trailer can only lift the house eight feet high. It's the big one, that's right. Warren is forced to try a radical plan. We backed in this detachable trailer, set it down on Cribbon, and that's going to enable us to walk up on top of it. He hopes to make up the extra height by backing his hydraulic trailer up onto another flatbed but he's going to do it with the 20-ton house still attached. Okay. That's going to give him an extra three or four feet. But that's not all. Storm clouds are moving in, and they are running out of daylight. We're hoping to beat the rain. It's already after 5 when the house starts the daunting climb. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Hold on. Lift this uh, right side up. Until you see the house you're going to live in at like a 30 degree angle, and you think, OK, I guess it's supposed to do that. And then it writes itself and goes up and down. I mean, it, it's amazing. It's taken a full hour to come this far. We still need to get that back end over a little bit. So we're going to pull forward and steer to the right. There's just one hour of daylight left. Oh, oh, oh. look at our house. It's coming over. When everything stops. That might be it for the truck. Is that it for the lift in the truck? Well, they had a bit of a problem, at least from our amateur standpoint. They're backing it up and then realized they didn't have enough oomph. The trailer can't go any higher. It's fractions of inches that we're dealing with. And Meg and Marty's house is stuck, 10 feet in the air. It's time to push this move into overdrive. So we built a grip pile, and we're going to suck the truck up and crib up the truck. Not my Warren must use the trailer's hydraulics to lift up the back wheels of the truck. It might be just enough to force the house up and onto the foundation, but it leaves the entire trailer, house, and cab balanced on just two front wheels. 
I'm not exactly sure what they're doing with those tires, but... Yeah. I hear they're like airplane tires, so they can stand the stress. The house is finally hovering a few inches above the foundation, and now must come in for a landing. Touchdown. It's about 12 hours after they started doing this, and the house is on the foundation. We're done. We're finished. <laughs> it is down. It's not moving anymore. Hope you appreciate your home. We do appreciate it. Very good stuff. It looks stuff. awesome. It looks exactly as we pictured it. Great. Meg and Marty's new home is the first house to move into the old neighborhood. At least half a dozen people, as we were coming through New Orleans, said, bring me one. <laughs> Four weeks after the move, the 10-foot foundation has been closed in. And a year after Katrina, Meg and Marty are almost ready to move into their new home. This neighborhood's almost like a family. And seeing people coming back, I can't explain how much of a community we are. What I see for a vision or a dream of this neighborhood in the next five or 10 years, our house is coming back. We have our initial settlers, if you want to call them that. We get in, get a foothold, and we can keep a watch while other people come back. 